Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for this uh, penultimate session of the EcoPrint and Wet Felt Club launch week. I know that many of you have been with me from the start of the week. You've been with me for the free three day boot camp, followed by raising a glass to launch the membership club, and then here to have your questions um, about either answered. Now, before I introduce myself and Shauna, I just want to say there is a really special bonus announcement or an announcement with a bonus towards the end of this live stream today. So if you are interested in uh, learning more about the club and seeing what that bonus might be, please stick around until the end. So as with other days, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Nicola Brown. I'm an artist in rural Southeast Ireland, and I'm developing a sustainable textile practice. I started wet felting in the summer of 2007, and pretty soon I became absolutely obsessed with the technique. It's a passion of mine. And then once I was introduced to eco printing, it was actually a bit of a slow burner. But when I discovered how to achieve really good, crisp and vibrant eco prints on my felt and other fabric without having to use traditional powdered mordants. That's when I really became hooked on the process, the dirty pot process. So that's me, Nicola Brown, developing a sustainable textile practice and growing my own eco print and natural dye plants. Now, uh, do drop us um, a line, let us know where you're tuning in from as with other nights. And if you're watching on the replay, please do that as well. Because after this week has ended, Shona will be collating all the different uh, regions people have tuned in from. We're all over the world. It's just fantastic. The community where we can uh, meet each other, make friends and connect online. So we're going to put something together um, that just has a little bit of a lowdown of where people are tuning in from. So um, without further ado, I'd like to just introduce Shauna. For those of you who don't know her, Shauna is just an absolute massive help to me. She lives in the same county as I do here in Ireland, but wait till you see her. Currently, she's in Portugal, although I have to say we have every bit as much sun. So uh, here she is. Hi, Shauna. Hello, everyone. How are we all again? <laughs> <laughs> you look beautiful, Shauna. You look flushed with the sun and uh, <laughs> you're missing great weather in Ireland, but we still would love to be near or I would love to have a little swim. So I hope you're taking advantage of the Portuguese water. Oh, I am. I'm about to go kayaking through the caves down in the Algarve. So definitely making use of it. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I'll remove you from the stream now, Shauna. But if anybody has a question, um, I'm going to invite questions at various stages in the um, live stream. All you need to do is put three question marks in front of your question and after it. And that way, Shauna will be able to find your question easily so that I can answer it. And I'm not expecting tonight to be a really long session. And I do have a super special bonus for all new club members. And if any of you are watching who have already jumped on board to join us, that will apply to you as well. So don't worry that you will miss out. Everybody who joins is going to get that extra special bonus, which I will be announcing later. So um, I'm just going to flick through a few of the slides that I did last night, and then I'm going to move on to new slides because I am aware that some of you have not been here before. And I'm going to do this in a faster way than last night because you can go back to the live stream from last night if you want a more in-depth answer. So the membership club is different from an online workshop because it's all about the implementation of knowledge. It's about me helping you and guiding you, providing information in the club library, also access, of course, to videos that are publicly available on YouTube. But there's a huge wealth of information in the library. And 
regardless of whether you have previous experience wet felting or previous experience eco printing, I hope to be able to guide you to where you want to go on your creative journey. And um, Shona will be there to help behind the scenes. And there were a few questions about um, tech. You know, did, do you need to be tech savvy to get the most from the club? And the, the short answer is no, absolutely not. If you are watching this video and if you're able to answer or write an email, that's actually all you need to be able to do online to become a member. Because we're there to help you, but the Kajabi library, although there's a lot of content in it, once new members have their orientation during the week, um, Shauna and I will be doing live Zoom conversations, group conversations. We will give you all the help you need so that you can just make sure you can access the library, you've got your password, everything is organized. So if you're watching this video or you can answer and write an email, that is all the tech knowledge that you need to know to become a member of the club. And I'm just going to pop these slides up just so you can see um, what the interface looks like. Now, these are different slides than yesterday. I'm just showing you two. But and the reason I'm showing you these is this is in the wet felting section. So you can see there, for example, that this is um, the basics of wet felting. And everything that you see underneath here with those little images, those are all in the section about the basics of wet felting. There are other sections about wet felting as well. But in the basics, what is wet felting? Which fibers I recommend? Um, goes down through everything. And then um, we come along to wet, wet felting cords, a step-by-step -step tutorial. That's one of the tutorials that's actually available on YouTube but I, I will be sharing different ways that you can use these cords for jewelry and different things, for example, once the new members join the rest of the gang. And then for those of you who have um, health issues, um, time after time, people, um, I find that people often have to stop felting if they have some health issues or they're finding their back is giving them problems. And there is a solution for this. And it's actually um, wet felting using your tumble dryer. And the tumble dryer does all that hard work for you. So it's the tumble dryer that's doing, in effect, the rubbing and the rolling. So you can concentrate on all the design of... Um, the design of your felt and the pleasure of that creative process. And then I think you may well find that you are able to felt. So if that's something that concerns you, definitely I will be sharing how to remove all the physicality of wet felting. So that could be something that interests some of you. Um, then I'll go back in here and flick through these. So the club is all about the implementation of knowledge. There's so much information out there. And this just distills my 14 years of experience. And I hope that everybody finds it's presented in a very down to earth way, just like the boot camp was. And it's presented simply, it's easy to follow. And within the club, there are just so many short video clips with all the information you need to know for very specific parts of the process. And we've all been there and gone down that rabbit hole when we're researching online or in magazines or books. And sometimes this can lead to information overload. And you know, we become frustrated and we discover that something, some vital part has been um, missed. And that happens for everybody, me included. And we often just forget the obvious. And sometimes just stripping things back to the very basics and just starting from there, it's going to empower you and you can achieve the results that you've always wanted. 
And there's some amazing work being created by members of the club, by founding members. Absolutely outstanding. And uh, I can't wait for new people to see what they have been getting up to. And everybody within the club will inspire you. They'll cheer you on. They'll empathize, help you when you're stuck, as well as me, obviously. But it's a really nice environment to meet people who have similar um, ethics and interests. So the club is a really happy place. And I think that you will discover that it's just you get inspired and one person what one person does will spark an idea with you maybe you go off in another tangent and everybody will cheer you on and so um the creative process it builds a connection and the connection is actually with you know ourselves our family our friends community the natural environment and it gives us confidence and um some people within your families may think you're crazy for wanting to collect big old pots and pieces of rusty metal. But pretty soon when they see what um, you are producing, that sort of <laughs> that doubt and disbelief turns to just pride and amazement. And trust me, if you make uh, eco printed garment or if you felt a lovely scarf or bag for somebody, they're going to be quite happy that you're sharing um, what you're learning. And so the more confident we are, the more um, connections we build, and then we lead a more fulfilled life. So uh, my question to you is, will you join me and fellow club members uh, on this exciting textile adventure? And I'm here to answer your questions. and. Thinking of questions, I also want to answer some questions that have come up as a result of the boot camp. And these questions, it's the nuance of things within the club that I think is so beneficial because you get the knowledge, but then you get the nuance for, for um, implementing the knowledge and getting just very small little tips and things that might make a huge difference to your practice. So I'm just going to um, pop up a few questions on the screen that have come through before uh, over the last few days. I'm going to answer them and then I'm going to let you know how you can join if you don't already know and let you know about that surprise bonus, which I hope you'll be happy about. So question number one, can you use homemade cider vinegar in the brew instead of bought vinegar? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can use any vinegar whatsoever. Somebody else did ask, could, could they use lemon juice? And the answer is no. So both vinegar and lemon juice are acidic. But the issue with lemon juice is it will bleach your colors. It won't enhance the results that you get. So don't use lemon juice, but any sort of vinegar will work. My aluminium pot is now pitted. And for those who with English not being a first language, that's just got little, it's not got a hole that's leaking, but it's got little holes and the, the inside of the pot is distressed. Is that a problem? No, not a problem at all, unless it is leaking. However, if your pot is pitted, I think that's an indicator that you would be better to remove the pot liquid from it between sessions and give it a quick rinse out with water. Then I have unearthed an aluminium preserving pan from the attic. Does it need a lid when I am processing bundles? The answer to that is a very, very definite yes. If you go back to video one from the boot camp series, you will remember I said that the pot needs to be boiling. It needs to be bubbling and you need a lid on that to keep that heat in. The other thing that a lid does is um, it helps prevent too much evaporation. So if your lid isn't fitting very well, that could be another issue. So consider um, the lid you want it to fit well, but you could also make a makeshift lid from something else. Just don't give yourself a steam burn. Now, this is a very interesting one. Somebody actually went ahead and they measured their uh, the thickness of their roasting pan. 
and they say it's 16 gauge, which is about 1.5 millimeters in thickness. Is that considered heavy enough to leave the pot liquid in it for several months at a time if they take the iron out of it between sessions? Absolutely not. I went and measured some of my pots and 1.5 is, is a regular, just a decent quality saucepan for your kitchen. My heavier um, pot that's not particularly big, it's 40 liters, that pot is actually six millimeters in thickness and I leave the, the liquid in that, but 1.5 is not heavy enough. I would certainly leave it overnight or for even two days or three days, but not any longer, or you will run the risk of getting holes. And then does it matter um, the specific leaf variety as long as you know it contains tannins? Absolutely. When you are working without traditional mordants, it's really important. Not every leaf works. And within the club, I give you information about leaves I have found extremely successful. And because I have experience teaching in different countries and different climates, I will have quite a few different suggestions for you. Um, it is different when you're working with traditional powdered mordants. Um, if they contain tannins, you may well get very good prints time after time. But in the dirty pot, using the pot as mordant, you will not necessarily get good prints. Now, somebody um, <laughs> asked me, somebody in Alaska, they don't have um, wild blackberries grow growing, but they do have wild raspberry and wild hedgerow roses. They will, well, certainly the rose will print beautifully, but I think the raspberry will print beautifully as well. That is... Um, I haven't got raspberries growing here at Clashine, but raspberry leaves that I have used on other people's, you know, from other people's gardens have always printed well. So I think that the wild raspberry and the wild rose leaves would be excellent. Another question came in, can I print with fruit and berries? No, unless you want a brown smear that will probably fade very quickly. No, you can't. You need a mordant if, if you are, let's say you wanted to dye with some berries. First of all, you would need to mordant your fabric, but also you would never with natural dyeing be processing your bundles at that rolling boil. So you wouldn't be processing them at such a high temperature. And we need that when we're in the dirty pot. So what happens then is if you, if you, Boil and you process your bundles in the dirty pot for the length of time that you need. If you have things like the, like, let's just say we put blackberries in and to have tried them. Um, what will happen is you'll just get a brown smear of a print. It will be very unattractive and it will discolor very, very quickly. So I certainly wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do that. Okay, let's see the next question. Um, would a regular outdoor propane gas grill work for boiling a pot for the hours required for eucalyptus. Now, so long as your pot can bring the water to that bubbly boil and you have a large enough propane cylinder, absolutely, I see no reason it wouldn't. Uh, people in previous workshops of mine have used barbecue grills, but I haven't myself, so I can't say about your specific grill, but if you can bring a pot to a boil and you have a decent sized cylinder, that would be no problem. Then when processing bundles, how much liquid should you have in the pot? You need enough liquid so that the bundles are underneath the liquid. Um, and you always want to check your pot regularly. Now, if you have a tight fitting lid, you don't need to do this as often, but you don't want the water to evaporate or the pot liquid, so you need to top it up. Can I use a copper pot as my dirty pot? Yes, but you will get very, very muted results. You will get nothing like as good result as if you use aluminium or cast iron. And I suspect also that the um, pieces will not necessarily be as light fast. And normally when you would use copper, well, I'm not gonna talk about traditional mordanting, sorry because then that's another rabbit hole and I'm just answering the question. Yes, you can use a copper pot 
it's not what I recommend for you if you are beginning. I recommend aluminium or cast iron. Then how to care for textiles afterwards and how would you wash pieces that are a combination of eco printed and plain. I was actually washing some of my own clothes this afternoon and I put in a whole series of, of mixed pieces and I also put in some, some plain cream linen trousers in the wash. So I always wash my pieces on a 30 or 40 degree wash. I use olive oil soap. And if they are cellulose fabric, I use plenty of water in the wash and quite an aggressive wash. And if they are wool, silk or protein based fabric, I put them through the, um, the wool cycle of my machine. If your machine is very old though, and has a tendency to make wool shrink, you would be better to hand wash wool. But overall, um, I think that um, the modern machine, certainly you can definitely use the wool wash. And then in relation to the iron, I iron my textiles when they are hot and when they come out of the machine. And so the iron that I use, I use the hottest setting of the iron, even if it doesn't say it's suitable for the fabric I am ironing. And I just keep moving my hand. And somebody did have a question, would they iron through greaseproof paper? Or there are little, I'm not quite sure what you would call them, but it's an ironing cloth that you can iron delicates through. If you're nervous about anything, do use that. Um, or you could use a very fine piece of linen fabric or tea towel. But personally, I just put the iron straight down on it and I just keep moving my hand at the, at the highest, the hottest thing. Um, okay, let's just see. When finding fabric sources from thrift stores, how can you tell if it is animal based? Only really by starting to develop a knowledge, by experience, by how it feels, by how, how it looks. But a really good tip is to look for a fabric that says dry, clean only. Because if it says dry, clean only, the chances are that it is going to be either wool, silk, cashmere, mohair, yak, quivet, or a combination of those natural fibers. So um, I would say, look and see if it says dry, clean only, that's a fairly good indicator to me. Can protein and cellulose-based fabrics be processed together in the dirty pot at the same time? Yes, they can indeed. And you can also add paper at the same time. All you have to remember is that the protein-based fabric gets prepared with vinegar beforehand, and the cellulose-based fabric has a rust water dip. So those are discussed, the protein-based fabrics in boot camp one, the cellulose fabric in boot camp two, but there's all the information you could possibly want and I'm there to help you in the, the club. So that's not a problem, but you can process everything at the one time. And the other thing you can also do is you can actually um, have bundles submerged in the pot and you can steam over them. So for things like tannin and iron reactions, you can steam on top of your dirty pot bundles. So before I just go on into how to join and uh, let you know this exciting new bonus, I'm just going to check and see, are there any questions? So if you have some um, questions, oh, I see there are a few questions. Now is the time just to, to drop them in as a comment. And um, here, um, if, if they're not appropriate, by the way, for this, for today, I won't answer them, but I may leave you a comment afterwards because I want to keep quite focused. So Annie, can the dirty pot be too dirty? <laughs> Not for me, because I like moody, dark and dramatic prints, um, but you can just remove some of your liquid and dilute it. You can start again. There are all sorts of things you can do. And again, adjusting the pot liquid is something that will come up time after time in the club. And I personally, can't have it too dark, but there are times when I may want it more golden. Um, so, um, oh wow, Deborah, this is fantastic. Hello from Southern Maryland, USA. I'm really happy I found your boot camp, and I'm gifting myself with the membership. So excited to dive deeper into these techniques. 
Deborah, thank you so much for joining. I am so excited. And I think you are going to be just so blown away by what you can achieve. And I think it's a really nice idea what you're saying, gifting it to yourself, because giving yourself the freedom and permission to do something, whether it's on a professional level or on a personal level, it gives so much fulfillment. So welcome to the club, Deborah, and you two will be getting uh, the little bonus, uh, or it's not that little, the bonus that I'll be announcing in just a minute. And um, oh, this is interesting. There are non-flammable patches for aluminium, um, for aluminium pots. This is really interesting. So are these, Annie, you might drop another comment in, please. Do you mean that if you have a hole in your pot, you can repair it? Because if that's the case, I have one fish kettle that I would like to repair. So I would be very, very interested in that. Oh, and here's somebody else coming in from the most beautiful place in Portugal. It's really fantastic. Um, hi. Hi, Maggie. You're in a very gorgeous location. Um, I'm guessing it's pretty hot for you today, but it's pretty hot here um, too. And I think if I'm correct, there might be quite a few eucalyptus forests near where you are. Anyway, I'm just going to go on now. And if anybody else does have any questions or any, if you want to drop into the chat, um, what if, if they are suitable for any pot, just please do that. Um, so I'm just going to, yeah. Okay, so this is really interesting. I'm going to reply, let's see. Okay, aluminium pots can be repaired with these patches. Um, Annie saw these online the other day and she hasn't tried it herself. Thank you so much for that, Annie, because I'm going to go to my friendly local hardware store and I'm going to see if they can um, give me any clarification or obviously I can look online. That would be really good because I do have a couple of pots myself. That's why I'm urging you not to leave your pot liquid in. Um, okay, so how do you join? So the first thing I want to say is there is a hard deadline tomorrow night. And that deadline is BST is actually British summertime. It's the same time that we are on in Ireland. It's GMT plus one. So if you live in America, please realize that this is Irish time, not um, not um american time so please do not leave it too late if you would like to join us and actually i just see um helga has popped up uh in the chat hey helga really nice to see you so helga is saying hi everyone my dirty pot is boiling away at the moment in connecticut usa she learned everything right here and she's so glad that she joined Thank you so much, Helga, for the endorsement. I really appreciate it. I didn't realize you were uh, watching because I can't see who's joined. I have too much to do here. But thanks so much for that, Helga. So um, I'm delighted that you're enjoying it. And I must say, if anybody follows Helga on Instagram or Facebook, her pieces that she's creating are absolutely beautiful. And she's a wonderful model. Anyway, to subscribe as a member and join us, please register before midnight tomorrow and don't leave it too late. Membership is not going to open again for this club until sometime in 2023. Now, I do not know when that will be. So I have duties behind the scenes. Um, I'm helping care for a couple of fam family members part-time and I want to devote all my attention to the members that I have. It's taken since the beginning of February to build out the membership library into the form it is now. And what I'm really excited about is at the beginning, I was doing a lot of the recording myself with my phone and um, I've learned a lot. I joined some um, online subscription clubs myself so I could learn more about recording. I have Shauna helping me behind the scenes and Mihol is helping me with um, developing the membership and the way the program runs and the, the um, tech stuff, uh, you know, within the library, et cetera. But what I'm really excited about is that now that all the core content is in the library, I will be able to do a lot more studio work myself and work in tandem with you.
uh, with the members. And so we will be sharing a lot of ongoing things and new developments and experiments, et cetera, et cetera. So members will have that inside uh, knowledge of what I'm up to well before anybody else does. And then how much does it cost? So it is, um, as Deborah said, she's gifted this to herself. It is an investment. I am not saying it is not inexpensive or that it is not, um, I'm not um, undervaluing how much this costs because I understand that every cent we earn or that we have is precious. And if people are retired, even more so. And um, 99 per month is if you were having a Costa coffee or a Starbucks coffee, 99 per month is what that is. Um, 990 US per annum, that is um, that gives you two months free during the year. And I promise that I'll be available to guide and help you. Obviously your fellow club members are there as well. We'll all welcome you warmly. But for that, you can think of it like you're having um, me on your shoulder. I am there to answer your questions in the library because you can leave a comment when you look through the different lessons. You can leave a comment uh, under one if you have a comment about um, specific questions uh, about specific topics. But the Facebook group, we can all um, share images. We can ask questions and do stuff there. And I am there all the time. OK, so that's the first thing. And what I didn't write on my slides up to now, because honestly, it has been a lot of work getting the boot camp together. And I ran into a few tech issues myself early on behind the scenes, and I didn't get as many slides prepared as I wanted to. So I also offer a full, no quibble, 14 day money back guarantee. And that's regardless of whether you pay for the annual subscription or the monthly subscription. So if within the first 14 days you would like your money back, that's a no quibble guarantee. And Michal actually um, put that on the website today because when you join as a monthly subscriber, you, you subscribe and it's like a direct debit. So it will come out of either your credit card, your debit card or your PayPal account every month. But I want people to understand the full money back guarantee is there. If you're a monthly subscriber, you can just stop at any stage. Um, you know, you need to just stop before your next um, payment goes out of your account, but you can stop at any stage that you want to. And there were also some questions about what would happen if you joined as a monthly subscriber? Could you subsequently change to an annual subscriber? And the answer is yes. It will take a little bit of ingenuity for me because tech and brain power is not my forte. But yes, you can. So if you decided to join um, and you know start for the first few months as an, a monthly subscriber, and then you found how much value you were getting and you were really thrilled with what you were making and producing, then you, if you want to upgrade, I'm happy to upgrade you at the price that everything is now. So just to go back to that, it's 990 per annum or it's 99 per month. Um, so whoever joins now is locked in at this price for as long as they're a member. Now, this is the exciting news I have. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but for everybody who joins now and also for, you know, you, my current members, we're all going to have, I have decided, I'm not in a position to host regular online workshops anymore like I used to do before, but for new club members and to celebrate you joining us, um, I'm going to uh, do a very special uh, workshop. So it's obviously going to be virtual, but I will be working in my studio. You will be working in your studio. It's going to contain felting and eco printing. You can do one or the other or both of them. And it's going to be delivered over two separate days. So one will be, let's say, a Saturday one week. And then the next will be a Saturday the following week. So I will have several several live streams for you that day and we'll do it some of it by zoom so you can see different aspects of what's happening etc cetera, etc cetera. so basically i'm going to give you a really comprehensive um 
workshop that's not going to be offered anywhere else. It's going to be in eco printing. It's also going to be in wet felting. And you may decide to combine the two, two techniques. So that is a special bonus for everybody who joins before midnight tomorrow. So I'll just take that out. And I hope that the people who've already joined are happy about that. Obviously, you're going to get that as well. Um, so you know something? I think that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to just see now, are there any more questions coming in? And let's just see here. Um, oh, here's somebody else. Great. Somebody else in Portugal. It's very interesting. Central Portugal will join tomorrow. Great boot camp. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If you want to drop your name in the chat, I'll know who you are. But do you see the way um, your name is coming up and it says um, Facebook user? And then when Helga um, came up, we've got a photograph of her as well. And so when I go live, if I go live on StreamYard, which is the software I'm using, there is something at the top of your screen usually. And if you're watching on Facebook rather than YouTube, you can give Facebook permission to share your profile picture. But that's all for something else. So I'm absolutely delighted you're going to join tomorrow. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm just going to see a um, few more. Oh, it's Linda. Linda. Hey, <laughs> great. That's great, Linda. Thank you. Um, here is a question. Uh, would there be a problem using a cylindrical turkey fryer? And then um, my answer is I have not used one. It's always easier to have a wider pot that's shallower than a taller, narrow one. But absolutely, people are using turkey fryers and I think they're fantastic. Like they fit a big amount because I'm guessing you're in America. Uh, if, you're, if you live in the USA, your uh, portion sizes are bigger than ours and your turkeys are probably about four times the size of ours. So definitely you can use your turkey fryer without a doubt. Um, okay, uh, Mariana saying exciting. Yeah, I'm excited because I love teaching live and, and I, love, I love teaching face to face and with online workshops. But the membership is my baby now. And this is just a way we can all communicate and get to know each other better and see each other live uh, within the club. Um, and he also has a color about how can you get more color or question, how can you get more color on linen? And the simple answer to that is use mordants or tannin and iron reactions without mordants, but again, that's within the club. So there are ways that you can get color on linen, but unless you're using traditional powdered mordants, it is very much more difficult. There are other ways using um, soy or yogurt uh, to prepare the fabric, but again, that's not something for this, this boot camp or the, it is something for the club, but within the club. And um, Diane, you are very welcome. I am looking forward to the bonus as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see what people make. And um, at the end of our sort of 10 days, you know, one weekend, another weekend, people making, um, we'll host a little online exhibition and we can share what people have made should they want to. And that actually is something that I would like to say. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I'm just going to take a drink of my cold brew tea. Mm. Rachel has just joined and Rachel is saying, I missed, I missed the bonus. Okay, Rachel, let me just flash it up. So what the bonus is, I, I did say yesterday in answer to a question that somebody asked me, I am not teaching and won't be teaching any online workshops for the foreseeable future. All my energy is going into the club. I want it to be a really vibrant, active community. So what I've decided to do is for everybody who joins on board and comes into the club before the deadline tomorrow night, I am going to do um, a, sorry, I hit the wrong button there. I am going to do um, a workshop with you. 
a bonus workshop. It will be a hands-on workshop, although obviously we'll be doing it virtually. So I will be working in my studio. You will be working in your studio, your kitchen, wherever you work. It will for, have two parts. So it will be one day, one weekend or midweek. We, we'll decide that in the club, but probably a weekend. There'll be one day where we felt. Then the next weekend, we will eco print. But for people who are who only want to felt, they could felt both week, weekends. And for people who want to eco print, you'll have to wait to the second weekend. But the point is, it's going to have loads of live elements. We'll check in on Zoom several times. I'll try and check in with people in all sorts of different time zones. Uh, I, I need to work the logistics out, but trust me, it's going to be vibrant, fun, fantastic. And it's not available to anybody that's not in the club. So it's a workshop and my only online teaching workshop of the year. Okay, so here we go. So, um, oh yes, hi Inga. So my name is Inga and yes, in New Jersey, USA and our turkey fryers on average are, are made for turkeys up to 10 pounds. <laughs> the ones I've seen look even bigger, but I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. Thank you for clarifying that. So does anybody have a question? Is there something I can help you with to make your mind up about whether you would like to join us in the club? Because really that's, you know, the main point of these live streams towards the end of the week are just to answer your objections, not to force anybody to join. And I want to be very clear about that because um, as I say, now where did I put that? I'm just gonna add this to the screen screen again. So I am offering a full, no quibble, 14 day money back guarantee because I do not want anybody to be in the club and feeling that they've wasted their money. So regardless of whether you, you choose to take advantage of the, you know, the better value of making the annual subscription or whether you want to do the monthly subscription, I'm giving a full 14 day money back guarantee from you know, today or tomorrow, um, whatever, 14 day money back guarantee, regardless of which subscription you opt for. And I should also just say one thing. Um, within the founding members, I mean, some people have dropped out through various circumstances. That's not a problem. I won't be offended at any stage. You may have family health, you know, there may be health issues or family commitments. You may decide it's not for you. You may have, have no time. But you also may not actively actually upload things, let's say, to the Facebook group. But it's really interesting because there are actually quite a few members who are really just enjoying learning from the feedback I'm giving people in response to their questions, enjoying seeing the image of what's going up. And they're not necessarily actually doing a lot of hands-on work themselves. They may not be uploading things to the Facebook group, but they're really enjoying the sense of community and watching everybody else work. So there may be times in your life you can't physically do as much, but you might enjoy being part of the community and learning. And then when you are in a position to do the work, then do the work. So I think really that's it for me from tonight. I would just Oh, Annie, Annie has a question that's come through. Absolutely, you can use bats. Uh, I use bats myself a lot of the time. So Annie's question is, is all the felting and the club activities done with wool top or can you use bats? So that's another thing actually that, that your question has brought up. So the club is not like a workshop from the perspective that everybody works on the same thing this week and then next week we have a new lesson. The club has got this big library, it's a depository of information and knowledge and you choose, Sean and I will give you guidelines for, for where you should start if you come in from, you know, let's say you're new to wet felting where you would start or you're new to eco printing without powdered mordants we'll give you a, a kind of a roadmap or some suggestions of where to start. Um, so you can choose to use whatever fiber you like and none of it is a race, none of it is a competition. So we won't all be working, let's say on felt bags at the one time, but you can use whatever fiber you like. All the instructions are there and I'm there to, to guide you and answer all your questions. 
So any final questions or shall we say good night? And I look forward to welcoming those of you who have decided to join me and those of you who are already founding members and new members. Thank you so much for your uh, attention. Uh, I'll have one more live stream tomorrow just to wrap the week up and say a final cheers. And I'd like to thank Shona very much for all her help behind the scenes. She's been absolutely amazing. And um, I see she's just popped here. So I'm just going to add her to the stream for a second. We'll both wave, wave goodbye. And thank you very much for putting your trust in us. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Bye. And thank you so much.